Welcome to This Is My Code. I'm Lana from AWS, and today we're talking to Tim from Truffle. Welcome, Tim. Hi. Awesome having you here. Would you mind telling us a little bit more about Truffle? Yeah, uh, Truffle is a suite of tools for building uh, blockchain and smart contract applications. So the suite consists of three tools, the three tools here. The first one is Truffle, the second one is Ganache, and the third one is Drizzle. Truffle is the first one. This helps manage the workflow around building smart contract applications. Ganache uh, is a uh, blockchain simulator, looks and feels and acts like a blockchain. And Drizzle is Drizzle helps connect your front end to the blockchain application you're making. So we're starting to move towards the Web 3.0, right? Correct. Scenario. Exactly. That sounds great. So let's say I'm building an Ethereum application, and I've used tools uh, that you create before. But what about chain code applications that are supported by Hyperledger Fabric or any other protocols? Do you have support for any of those? We do, yeah. So we actually started out in Ethereum back in 2015. But since then, we've become blockchain agnostic and supports uh, many blockchains out of the box. So the first one, of course, is Ethereum, but there's also Quorum, which is very much like Ethereum. There we support Fabric EVM, mm -hmm. uh, are working towards full Fabric integration. And then we also are working to support uh, R3 Corda. Sounds great. Let's get started. So how do I start building my first Truffle application or a smart contract? Yeah, so what you're going to want to do is first install Node, um, and then uh, you're going to, going to want to install the Truffle suite of tools. Mm -hmm. So here we're using Truffle and Ganache CLI. In this example, we're, this is in uh, Cloud9. Sounds great. So I'm using Truffle as my framework and then Ganache CLI as a simulation environment to run my code and smart contracts. Correct. In. Sounds great. Um, so we have these tools installed. What do I do next? Yeah, well, the next thing to do is to build a smart contract. Here we have an example of a smart contract. This one is a token contract, which is the hot thing to build on top of the blockchain. Uh, we've called it Truffle Token, and you can see that this is where we've defined the contract itself. Um, here we give it a bunch of information of what defines, defines this contract, defines the token that we're building. And then um, we have, uh, we have a, a function here to actually transfer the token to everybody else. So a, uh, what a token might represent is either a digital asset or an asset on uh, a, a real life asset. And what you're going to want to do with that is transfer it between people. So this is the, this is the code that supports that. Um, sounds great. And when we're talking about tokens, so we usually specify whether it's a fungible or non-fungible token. So where do you specify that in a smart contract? Sure. So you have to build a smart contract the right the right way to support those. The token that that uh, that we actually support here is a fungible token. So this one you can cut up into many different pieces. You can have half of the token if you want. Um, but a non-fungible token would be uh, very specific. So for instance, one of the hot applications is CryptoKitties, uh, yeah. which is a digital <laughs> asset. Mm -hmm. And uh, with CryptoKitties, you can't cut a kitty in half. Well, you shouldn't. So it's a non-fungible token. That makes sense. And this is where the ERC-20 specification plays in. Correct. That yep. we define here. Sounds great. So something else is that um, how do we build, build safe contracts? So what are some things should you be watching out for? Let's say when you're transferring funds from uh, you to I, what should I be looking out for when I'm writing this function? Right. Yeah, so let's let's take a look at this, uh, this transfer function itself. So this is uh, th when you when you use this function, you need to first you need to pass in two things. Uh, the first one is an address, and the second one is a value. So here we have a token that has, let's say we have 10,000 of it, and I want to send a certain amount, maybe 200 to you, Lana. So I would put 200 in, in here, and then I would put your address, the, the address of your account, to say I want to give 200 to you. Now in this example, um, there, are, there are issues when you, when you write uh, token contracts because there are many ways to to, to game it. What we want to do and, and what we do here in the first line is we want to make sure that I even have the amount that I want to send. So for instance, if I want to send you 20,000 and I don't have that much, the contract shouldn't let me let me do that, right? Um, so so when you're writing secure contracts, you're going to, especially in this example, you want to make sure that that uh, you check all of your cases ahead of time. And so people, bad actors can't do things with it that you don't expect. Got it. And uh, I'm assuming we're using the total supply parameter to specify the amount of tokens that are created as a part of the contract. Correct. So there's a value here called total supply. And uh, this is actually set in the contract constructor when deployed. And in the constructor, it says, this contract is going to hold maybe 100,000 of the, of the tokens. And there's no more than that. And uh, um, you know, it, 
and then personally, my address has so many, let's say 10,000. Um, but uh, when the contract is deployed, those 100,000 will be um, uh, will be set in the contract. Got it. So now the balance has been upgraded to the new value. And what does the emit transfer function do? Yeah, so first off, when we're, we're actually doing the transfer, you can see here that this is where we actually um, change the value. So I have 200. I'm going to take 200 from me. So you can see this minus right here. And then I'm going to give 200 to you. Um, but the way blockchains work is that if I have an application that needs to respond to this action that tokens have actually switched hands, there's no way to do that. Um, and so this emit function says, hey, I want to let anybody who's listening know that a transfer happened. And you can see what we did. So I, uh, I sent uh, 200 to you. OK, that sounds great. So as we're working through building out our blockchain applications or smart contracts, uh, we usually like to use uh, different environments for my development workloads right. uh, and then something else to put in production. So how do I promote the code, let's say, from the testing it on the ganache and then onwards to my final network, let's say it's the AWS templates uh, for Ethereum or so on and so forth? Yeah, so we. Uh First, what Trouble lets you do is deploy to many different blockchains. This is one of the reasons why we, uh, we wanted to be blockchain agnostic. So you can set up different chains for your development environment. So that might be if you're using Ganache. Ganache is your local environment. And you can deploy to that. You can run your tests. You can make sure it's all perfect before you say set it to send it to a staging environment. And the staging environment might be one where you use it with your, your whole team. And your whole team can see and test the, this newer version. And then finally, once you're done with that, um, and once you've given the smart contract uh, all of the, the rigor that you, that you need in order to make sure it works, uh, you can deploy that finally live to your, your chain of choice. So we, Treble allows you to do that. It allows you to write automated tests. And you can run those automated tests on any chain that you want, whether that's, again, locally on Ganache, or if it's uh, the staging environment. Um, but then we, we're also actually working on a tool called Truffle Teams. And Truffle Teams is going to help this whole process, help you go from, uh, from developing, from, from the start of your development to going to the staging server, finally to production, and making sure it's easy to graduate from one to the other. Got it. I, I especially like the fact that you can isolate the environment in which you test your smart contract if you don't necessarily want to show traffic on the public test net. Exactly. Sounds great. Tim, thank you so much <laughs> for joining us today and telling us more on how to use Truffle tool, tools, Ganache, and Cloud9 to build Ethereum applications and blockchain <laughs> applications at large. And thank you for watching This Is My Code. <laughs>